I'm realizing since the storm will also be active when I teleport back, I'm curious. Would it actually be more efficient to land on Ember Twin and make the jump so that I can just take the storm back onto Ember Twin? Okay, so actually first thing I should do is deactivate gravity. For efficiency's sake. Pull this in here. Open that up. On this run we are not going to take the core. But practice going to the core. Remove or core. I will not do that this go around. back to warp pad, which is still glowing. Oh, word? Okay, so maybe because of being in the center of the planet fuckery, the exit warp works whenever. That's awesome. That's that's very useful. I thought that was, I was going to be wasting a lot of time there. Okay, so now... Where are the bramble at? On the other ass side of the solar system. Awesome. Coasted about a thousand. And a 10k start raining it in. Alright, good good note. Not quite the most efficient way to do it. For a strong red light. That's pretty good. in. Hands off the controller. As we wait it all out. They're actually less scary when I can see the eyes. I know the eyes are creepy looking on their own, but I prefer that to not being able to see the eyes.
This is going to be a stressful wait on our final run. Just the fact that I have to sit back and do nothing while I'm wasting precious time. Not wasting, all necessary, but while I'm using precious time. Although, depending on how much extra time I have, what I could do is leave a probe by the vessel, exit Bramble, and just see if there are any further shortcuts. Just to really maximize our time here. Alright, I'm feeling pretty comfortable. So we're going to this direction, southeast, I believe. Theoretically, would have the warp drive in hand. Warp board, sorry. We zoom, zoom, zoom. We replace warp core. Come over here. Ah, shit. Okay. Glad I practiced. Glad I practiced. Got to bring this over here. Okay. We have boom, boom, boom. Trickiest one. Boom, 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 boom. And then very gently bring it down here so I don't mess up the sequence. One down here. Wait to initiate that. And one of those does something. Presumably. And then very potentially, I might have to drag this one back around over here. I don't know what this does. That might be the one to actually uh, engage. Okay, so... We're at 59.15 is where we'll put that. So now I am going to...
keep a scout there. And then exit and see what happens. Sweet, that's what I wanted. So now, if I head back in, Interesting. Okay, so I'm curious to find that one. So that's a shortcut. That's going to be even better for me. Oh, shit. Where's this one feed? Okay, this one just re leads back to the red, then that's not helpful. Another duplicate? At that point, that is two, um, two cycles. So even if that leads to a technical shortcut, which it might not, I don't know if it's going to be any shorter than um, sticking with the red. So we'll stick with the red. I really expected that to get me out of Bramble entirely because I'm trying to do a thing here, but... Let's just get inside of a seedling so the fish can't get us without teleporting in the next room. does that explosion take to reach us? Okay. 3 minutes 57 seconds. If I remember correctly, that is about Three minutes and 45 seconds of leeway, which is not as much as I'd like, but if we think about it in terms of how long a cycle is, that's like almost a fifth of a cycle, and I really don't think there's any way to shorten down how long it takes um, for the towers to show up, so I think that's just what we're going to have to do. But before we do that, I really have to pee. Okay. 
frame perfect. It hasn't even opened all the eyes yet. Oh, because we have um, uh, four eyes, the way that our eyes open up has a cool little slit uh, effect on it. I never picked up on that. That's really fun. Anyways, I got to pee. Sometimes the pee motivates you, and sometimes the pee just stresses you out. And I was thinking of um, getting into the red room and just waiting all the fish and still having to pee really badly. I was like, that's not going to be healthy. That's not a good way to handle this. Okay. No time for caution. Let's do this. Oh, my controls no longer working. Game crash. <laughs> it already knew. It already knew, oh, we're going to have to do a lot of wacky shit this, this loading cycle. Might as well just crash now so we get used to it. Oh my god. That's, wow. On the pause screen. Now I don't think, now I think it just happens at complete random. I don't, they're, they're, that can't be because it was loading too much. It was the start of the fucking cycle. <laughs> Alright, well, look. If they're looking at my Artemis 2 poster that I have up on the wall... Sometimes, um, if a safety technician says no go on the flight, uh, you just, you postpone it. Just right off the bat, a single thing and not working the way you think it's supposed to. Let's pause, let's check it out, let's move it back a little bit. That's why I met, I met a, a safety engineer at Eclipse Fest in Cleveland, and I, uh, um... I, I know what love is now. But that's beside the point. Uh, we are going to resume our expedition. She was really cool. And she worked on like the... Like she's working on Artemis 2. And, they, and she was just there and was like, yeah, I'll talk to people who wants to talk about space. And I was like, I would like to talk about space. Um, and it was really cool and awesome. And she was also really cute and uh, really cool and had a cool Lord of the Rings tattoo. And I felt normally about the entire interaction. And all of that is what's motivating me to save the fucking solar system. Maybe. We have no idea what the eye of the universe is capable of. This is the crapshoot of all crapshoots. From a, like, knowing that game designers design this game, I do feel like this is what I'm supposed to do. But from, like, our character's perspective, I am... I have characterized myself as a skeptic of the Eye of the Universe, and I think it is a very interesting arc that I am now choosing to place all of my faith in it because there's nothing else I can do to try and save my world. Well, this cycle could end uh, very badly, in which case we'll scrap it and try again. Nah, that's fine. Especially thinking of how long we're going to have to wait. I can't do Quantum Moon in four minutes. I don't even know if I could get to the bottom of the core of Giant's Deep in four minutes. So there's... I, I would be... Uh, no, it's just because of how long the egg room takes to get through, I would be shocked if I'm missing a step of this that is related to um, keep the eye from moving anywhere else. I just I I have clocked that that could have been a possibility, and I am now like firmly believing it is not. It just could have been because I don't think the game would. For, for a sequence in which I'm, I purportedly only have one shot, I can't imagine they would um, throw a surprise at me like that, you know? Okay, there's a storm. I thought it would be in front of me. It was not. Yeah, unless there's something I'm supposed to be doing. Like right now while I'm waiting for the tower. 
I don't, I don't, again, I can't, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's that. I think that, I think this is, this is going to be it. Okay, there's Sun Tower. So we will just kind of hover here. Is that what I think it is? I believe so. Which one are you? The far one or the close one? I know one is taller than the other. I think that's the far one. Yeah, here's the close one. All right. So we'll give actually a significant amount of leeway so that the ship stays on the sand where I would like it to be instead of being haywire uh, amongst the rocks. And we wait. I think I have enough oxygen to spare. I might as well head over there. And there's also trees inside Ashton uh, Project, so as long as I get in there, I should be fine. Recording's looking good. I just gotta double check, especially on what I think will probably be our final session for base game I tend to be cursed in that degree but not today hopefully fingers crossed knock on wood I have a chair made of wood that counts that's it's, it's real I know the game wouldn't want this to be a solution but theoretically if I crashed into the interloper at a thousand mile or kilometers an hour Surely that would knock it off course, right? Just because of preservation momentum. I know my ship's not huge, and the interloper is considerably more huge, but like, it would make a difference. If this if this game really cared about its own sci-fi, then that would work. I guess that would kill me. And then Astron Project would, de would never activate, so maybe it's not the best plan, but just thinking outside the box here. That wasn't my chance, right? Yeah, because we still have this, this upper bridge. That's not actually useful. Technically, it's useful because it's what allows me to get onto the launch pad without getting sucked up, but it's not useful for our purposes right this minute. Pads will still work with Ash Twin Project being deactivated, right? Those aren't we're good we're good there. Those don't those don't deactivate. I sure hope so. That would be bad. <laughs> I would be permanently stuck well maybe not permanently, I could probably just put the warp core back. Hopefully. <clears throat> Alright, really testing my I have plenty of oxygen for this theory. But we should be fine. All right, sand is lowering to an acceptable letter to make the warp pad run. 
Apogee incoming. Don't know if that's the right term, but it sounds like it could be right. Storm incoming, engaging warp pad now. Shit, god damn it. That's all right. It activated, just wasn't strong enough. Stupid mini black hole ain't worth shit. So this feels like an insane thing to do on our final run, but <sighs> because it really is just a waiting game on Ash Twin. We're gonna spend some time with our good friend Slate. Slate. And just doze off for, I think we're gonna give it two minutes. Because if I miss my window, I can just restart the cycle. This first step is the only time where I would want, I, like, there's any point in wasting any time. So if it's not, if I do that and I slept too long, then I can just restart the cycle immediately before I deactivate the project. So there's no, no substantial risk there. It does mean I don't know where Ash Twin is going to be, but it should be, okay, yeah, right there. Awesome. It's even closer than it could have been. Nope, it's on the other side of the sun. My mistake. Don't you dare, Mr. Sun. Come on, gravity. Get me, gravity. God, they're so... bad at having gravity. <laughs> okay. Sun Tower, there's our double towers. <sighs> Probably could have waited four minutes, given how long I have to take otherwise. While wow, we're waiting. Why do I keep switching to planet mode? I don't tell it to. It's fun, but. Your orbital probe can has launched millions, 9,318,054th probe located at deep space anomaly matching all on criteria. The statue in the probe track module automatically accords each probe trajectory and transmits the data of the Ashton project. I found no my coordinates mark and location of the outer universe. Just double checking all those shapes. Those all look good with what I have drawn out on my little white whiteboard here. Boy, I hope the Nomai read left to right. <laughs> right I guess the, the console also rotates from left to right, so we can assume that that does uh, go in the direction we expect it to. That'd be a bummer. <laughs> Mm 
No, stop it. Rude. There's our bridge. Positioning under bridge. Hydrating. Whoa, what the hell is that? Oh, it's a very small particle. I thought it was like a big giant chunk of debris way off in the distance. Perspective, man, it'll get ya. Or something. As I look at my Artemis II poster that I have lovingly placed on the wall, I remember that a lot of things in space take a very long time, and a lot of times astronauts just have to wait things out. That's just how it goes sometimes. Positioned under bridge, prepared and ready. Apogee approaching, I refuse to change my terminology, I refuse to look it up, that's why I'm going to keep calling it. Storm hits in three, two, one. We're pad engaged. We are in. Opening warp core chamber. Deactivating zero gravity. Or deactivating gravity. <sighs> no time to ponder. Nope. What the hell? What the? What are we doing here, man? I pulled out my signal scope, went into first person, and then got attacked by cactus somehow while I was outside. I guess. Come on, man. Just let me have this. All right, we'll try four minutes this time. I also got really close to the warp core. It did not want me to remove it that time. That was... Um, come on. I did press the wrong button. I pressed the signal scope button. I didn't expect that to glitch me into oblivion. But at least that weird glitch happened before I did remove the warp core. Okay. It's not helping my blood pressure to have to keep hiding myself up to do my final run and then things keep going wrong. If I miss my window, we'll just do another cycle. As I look upon my Artemis II poster that I have, gloriously hanging on my wall. I remember that sometimes no-gos will uh, postpone a mission for months, and that's okay.
Ooh, that gets it real close. That slicks back real nice. Oh, four minutes is like perfect. That gives us plenty of time to like land really close to the towers. It's the perfect interception point between Timber Hearth and uh, Ash Twin. Now I just have to wait one more rotation of the storm. So theoretically, if I wanted to try and call it close, I could probably wait like. Ah, it's really annoying to know how much time I'm wasting again, but six minutes. Um, knowing that has to go all the way around again, and I think it's probably around a two-minute cycle. But four minutes is a really good compromise of giving me all the prep time I need. Um, without having to wait forever. Alright, so yeah, I guess don't take your signal scope out when you're inside Ashton Project, otherwise you'll uh, you'll become a ghost. Which is, to the shock of the audience, not helpful for saving the solar system. Feels poetic that I have about in my most in my practice run I had about four minutes to spare, and knowing that I have to also waste four minutes at the beginning. Interception window approaching, apogee approaching. Don't tell me if that's wrong. Hitting in three, two, one. We're pad engaged. We're in. Disengaging gravity. No time to ponder. Reemerging. Heading a ship. Oh, goody. The game knows what I'm doing, and it either likes it or it doesn't.
We'll sail in at 850. Controlled burn. Stabilized. Checking entrance for viable access to red room. Reassess. Checking entrance two. Clear. Approaching Red Seedling. Hands off thrusters. Now. I don't love our rotation. I'm trying to be do this kind of in character thing. I want to say the new music cues are very cool. <laughs> it definitely tells me that this was <laughs> gives me confirmation this is what I'm supposed to be doing, which I appreciate. <laughs> or I'm very much not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But I'm doing something. All right, I hate that I can't see them well, but I can see some of those eggs. Uh, we're not particularly close. I'm going to give another 20 seconds at least, but um, at least they're in sight. I was worried the angle would be so bad that we wouldn't even be able to tell when we're close. Tapping thrusters in 10... Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, engage. Sending probe. Opposite where we need to be, engaging roll. Stabilizing. Resending probe. Clear.
be adjusting, stabilizing, double checking, clear, boosting to the southeast of correctly oriented anglerfish, seedling in sight. Pushing thrusters now. Sailing in. Stabilizing now. Warp core in hand. Full on fuel, fuel on, full on oxy. oxy. Musical cues, encouraging. Applying warp core. Gravity engaged, a pleasant surprise. Applying coordinates. Coordinate one engaged. Coordinate two engaged. Coordinate three, engaged. And now we improvise. Engaging four. 